Okay, it's time for you to consume more based Vim tips. So let's begin by running NVim. You can also do Vim as well, of course, but NeoVim has a nice feature of which we will make use in today's video. In some of my previous tutorials, you may have noticed that I would sometimes just jump to a certain word. Not one word at a time, but the cursor would directly teleport to it. Let's say you're at the start of this sentence, and you want to jump to the word bananas. How would you do that? You hit forward slash, and then begin to type the word. If you're using NeoVim, you'll notice that as I type in stuff, matches are highlighted. You don't have to type in the entire word necessarily, just enough of a match, and then pressing enter will teleport you to the word. This is way faster than using F or W, and it gets even better. Once you find the first instance of the word, you can then press lowercase n, which will allow you to hop to the next instance of the word bananas. If you want to go to a previous bananas, you can do capital N. Once you reach the last or the first instance of the word bananas, you will loop back around. Very nice. <laughs> I know it's not super instinctive. You can think of it kind of like next and then shift and it's like reverse next or whatever, if that helps. Hitting forward slash is useful for forward searching. If you want to search back in text, question mark works exactly the same, except that the lowercase n and capital N are inverted, meaning that n, so let's just type the magical word, meaning that Lowercase n will take you backwards through the text, and uppercase n will take you forward, which makes sense, because of course what you're doing is you're searching backwards. So when you want the next instance, you're looking for the next instance backwards in the text. I hope that makes sense. This is something you will use literally all the time, as it not only allows you to search through the text, but it also allows you to jump to certain words really fast, as you do not have to even fully type out the word to get to it. So for example, if I want to search for motion, and it's also case insensitive. So notice how I typed in, I don't know why I'm pointing, that's where my screen is, but that's, actually, I guess, like this? Does that, does that make sense? Like here, question mark? <laughs> Am I pointing in the right place? I don't know. You can just search for instances of the word motion, and by doing lowercase n, we're jumping forward, and uppercase n, we're shifting, right? We're shifting gears or whatever. I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't drive. Does that make sense? Possibly. <laughs> and if we do question mark, let's say we want to look for the word. So see, as I type the word, if you look above, it sort of matches it does partial matches for other words. So if I do, if I type the word search, if I do SE, the word useful, for example, and use are partially highlighted because it's a partial match. And then as I do search, the other instances of search get matched. Enter, I'm doing lowercase n to go back because I'm searching backwards with question mark, and then uppercase n to go forward. And of course we just loop around once we reach the end. Let's jump back here. Now that we've got that out of the way, I want to introduce you to a motion which you will use all the time, the C or change motion. If you recall from the last tutorial, I introduced you to D or delete. If you haven't watched that yet, hit the card in the top right corner or check the description for my full Vim tutorial playlist. It's actually pretty based, so go, ch go check it out. <laughs> Also, I have written versions of all of my guides on my GitHub, including stuff that I've yet to make videos on. So if you're curious, check it out and hey, maybe give me a star so you can get me a one-way ticket into corporate hell. Yeah, I write my, I write my jokes down. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, fight me? <laughs> Come on, let's go, let's fight. <laughs> I bet you didn't think you'd be challenged to a fight in a, in, a, in a Vim tutorial video, did you? Now, what does C do? It acts the same way as D, but it puts you into insert mode at the end, 
meaning that you can begin to type immediately. For example, take the following sentence. Windows is the best operating system ever invented. You might be tempted to just hit DD in order to delete it. That would work, but perhaps you'd like to change it to something else after that. Normally, you'd have to do DD and then hit I in order to enter insert mode. However, now that you know about change, all you have to do is hit CC, and that will change the line, deleting its contents and allowing you to immediately write something else. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I was gonna have JK, but I have him mapped so that when I do JK, it just goes back into normal mode. That's pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> pretty cool, huh? <laughs> That's what the script says, so I have to say it. Change also works with all the other stuff, like cap, for change around paragraph, or CIW, for change inside word, which, like this, there you go. This one I use a lot when I just want to dip in and change a word. So, unironically, CIW is so useful. I use it, oh, all the time, because that's, it's just this, bam. Like, you know, let's say that you want to change the word stuff. Things. There we go. Isn't that, isn't that magnificent? Isn't that amazing? As a, as a, as a Vim Chad, as, as you are yourself, of course, you can just do this. Whereas with a, you know, if you were like a, like a word virgin or something, you'd have to take your little mouse and you'd have to go here and then you'd have to like do this, right? Or maybe if you, if you knew your stuff, you could like double click it or whatever and then delete it, but, or, you know, let's say you're here and you just, you've noticed the word stuff and you're like, ah, I'm going to get rid of you. Bam. Done. Isn't that beautiful? Why would you not want to do that all day? <laughs> okay. Last time I showed you a few motions like AW for around word and IW for inside word, AS for around sentence, IS for inside sentence, AP for around paragraph, and IP for inside paragraph. These motions don't work by themselves. Actually, I think they have like a different name, like text object something. I'll have to read the, the Vim manual again, but it's something like, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. It's just, the point is what they do. These motions don't work by themselves, but in conjunction with other motions like D and C. What's even cooler is that there are actually even more of these motions. What if you had some text like this within single quotation marks? Then you would use CI quotation to change the text inside of it. Of course, doing CA quotation mark would remove the entire quote, including the quotation marks themselves around the text, and it will then put you into insert mode. So, see, oh, there we go. And you can just do type funny stuff. Does this work with double quotes? Yeah, both CI like this and CA work. Now, I mean, this is this is super useful uh, if you do programming. This is super useful for manipulating strings because obviously you're going to have your strings either within double quotation or single quotations typically. And so if you have a string coming up and you want to change it, you can just do this. And the funny thing, I think I mentioned this in the video later on, but you don't even have to be on the same line. You can literally just be like here. So you can be like, like a line above or anywhere, it doesn't really matter, right? It's just that you have to be above and not below. And so you can do, let's say you want to replace the, the actual sentence below here. You just do change inside, double, and then you can just do that. Man, imagine, imagine using Word. <laughs> what if you have some tags, such as in HTML? Just like before, you do either CI or CA, and then either uh, less than opening tags or right than closing tags. Either will work. So let's say a uh, change inside tag. There you go. So you can do like, you know, body or whatever. And this works. So if you look at the bottom right, I have a little key caster. So CI less than that worked. CI greater than whoops, whoopsie doopsie, whoopsie doopsie CI. There we go. <laughs> And bam. The really cool thing, by the way, is that you don't even have to hover over the quotation marks or tags for this to work. 
In fact, you don't even need to be on the same line. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier. So you don't have to be within the sentence. You can be on the same line. You can be on a line above. You can be at the top of the text. It doesn't matter. Whenever you do, let's say, CI uh, double quotation marks, it will just search through the text for the first instance of double quotation marks, and then it will do its thing. So when you do CI double quotation marks, yeah, for example, then we'll look for the next instance of quotation marks in the text. It will delete the contents between the actual quotation marks and it will put you into insert mode. This can be super helpful if you're writing prose and it may come in handy when programming if you're working with strings. However, what if you want this to be even more useful when programming? Now here's where it gets real, uh, real nerdy. You may be pleased to know that when doing CA or CI, for example, you can also affect parentheses, square brackets, and curly brackets as well. When running CI open bracket, you will be able to immediately clear the contents of the parentheses, which is way nicer than touching your mouse, ew, clicking, and then typing. So notice that we're above it, we're not even on the on the line below. So CI open, CI open, there we go. Well, it actually did this one here, because I Whoops, you didn't see that. CI, there we go. Isn't that beautiful? So you're you know you're you're like above a, a function and you think, oh I want to change the contents. There we go. Also notice how my open bracket is like here. Cause uh yeah. <laughs> uh I've changed my layout for my keyboard so that I can open brackets and stuff on the left and then close them on the right. I might do a video on that if anyone's interested. It's QWERTY, but then all the symbols are actually in a really, uh, in, in different positions. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments and I might make a video on that. If you want to change the contents of this small array, the one just below, CI uh, square bracket has you covered. So if we do, boop, and of course it's, Let's just do it again. Yeah, there we go. So you just have to bear in mind that it will look for this one. So just make sure there's no other ones uh, in your way. So there you go. Finally, if you want to change the contents of the curly braces, CI curly brace will do just that. I mean, it's super useful, right? Just literally just bam. Oh, that's so that's so beautiful. And if you can, you can do C around. Ah. See, so now you're removing the, the curly brackets as well. Remember that either bracket works. So CI close bracket does the same thing. It doesn't have to be the opening one. And we're at the end. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> and now go out there and endlessly practice these motions so that you too can show off to your furry friends on Discord. What else? Uh, I'm making. I'm gonna make more videos on Vim. Uh, right now, I'm actually reading through the uh, pretty massive Vim help manual. It's actually incredibly, ridiculously well documented, and uh, I'll be making increasingly more uh, autistic videos on Vim. The channel won't just be about Vim. I'll cover more stuff. I'm, I've just filmed a video on Grep. It's gonna be about a bunch of really cool things. But I am gonna go down a pretty deep rabbit hole with them. So if you want to join along, if you want to learn some more cool stuff, make sure you subscribe. If you want to know what equipment I use to make these videos, including my lovely keyboard, uh, then I've got links down below. I think that's it. I think I've, I've begged enough for likes and money and stuff. So yeah, see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>